I want to talk about why I don't apply to and perform in comedy festivals anymore. Um, I used to apply to them a lot. And part of, part of this is coming up because I've been having this conversation with a few of my friends that run or have been a part of comedy festivals. And I've been, I've been on the board of a comedy festival as well. Um, but here's the deal. I want to come out... I'm not against comedy festivals, by the way. Uh, They're just not for me, personally. I think comedy festivals can bring a lot of positivity into the community. And it can also introduce a city to to the comedy scene. That's what the Pittsburgh Comedy Festival kind of did. Is uh, introduce the, the comedy scene to not just the city of Pittsburgh but also on a national scale to uh, let people know that Pittsburgh has a comedy scene and a good comedy scene and a viable comedy scene. Um, So I think there is value and positivity that comes out from doing a comedy festival. Uh, But I, I can't apply to them anymore because... I have veered away from that style of comedy. If you're and if you're applying to do a comedy festival, and this is my opinion and my thought, is usually you got to be quick. You know, that's a five-minute clip that somebody's watching, top to bottom, unedited. You know, it's not a highlight reel. It's not a best of reel. It is a it is a five to ten-minute clip, start to finish that you watch at a comedy uh, that that a bunch of these judges are watching right and uh you gotta you gotta get them quick you gotta get to that laughter quick um i am not that kind of a comic uh even in the show i'm writing now it's like the first one or two minutes don't have any jokes or laughter in it there's like little tiny moments but the big one comes in maybe two or three minutes into the show. That's that's the kind of comic that I am. I'm 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 slow burn. I am a long form comic. Um, I take my time with things. But that's also the form of comedy that I am one most comfortable doing. Two want to keep doing, and um, and enjoy doing. That's more suited to who I am as a person and and what my personality is. That, unfortunately, does not fit into the parameters of of a comedy festival. So if I'm applying and I send a a 10-minute set, you know, or a 5-minute set, I might only have three, four jokes in there. Rather than just, bam, punch, 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 punch. And there's plenty of comics that do that that are great. This is not me shitting on them. This is me letting, letting, that's not my strength. I know that about myself. I'm not punch after punch after punch. I am a, let's explore some ideas and try to figure some things out. It's slow burns on the, uh, on the jokes, you know? There's big pops and, and there's storytelling and uh, all of that is incorporated into my material. But in a five minute clip, you're not really getting all of that. My friend Katrina Coleman and I were talking about this in Memphis. I don't sell in five minutes. I sell in 30 or more. You have to be willing to come on a on a journey with me, you know. But, you know, that's not to say that... that that's part of the reason why I'm like, I don't hate comedy. I just can't do them. I just can't do them unless you're willing to come... At your, unless you're willing to to book me to do 30 or more minutes at your festival. I just can't do it. And that's part of the reason why I do French festivals a whole bunch. Because it's it's 60 plus minutes, depending on the festival and how much time that they allot, uh, you know, the people in the festival. That's 60 plus minute for me to do what I want to do. To take a thesis statement and really explore it. And earn an income and earn a living off of it. The other aspect of comedy festivals that's very difficult for blue-collar work in comics is we're basically, in order to do it, have to give up three, four days of work in order to be there. Um, And that could, and and look, uh, there's plenty of comedy festivals that 
have opportunities for people. Uh, and that's great. But that's not where I'm going. I've, I've said this a few times before, is I, I am more interested in working with venues and producers that are looking to cultivate something with me and build something so that I can bring a crowd that gives a shit about what's happening on stage and gives a shit about the establishment that they're in and gives a shit about the show holistically um, than just showing up and, and doing something on stage. I want to build a relationship. I want to build a partnership so that every time I come back to your city, we're growing together. There's more people that come back to see me and there's more people that want to come and see more of the shit that, 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 that is happening at the venue or that's happening with the, with the production that you're, that you're putting together. That's what I'm interested in. Um, so there's not a, there's a few independent comedy clubs that do that, but a lot of the larger ones, I don't know how much they are interested in doing that. My experience is that they are not. Um, and I've applied to a ton of festivals and talked to a ton of bookers, and they are not interested in this long-form idea exploration of comedy. The note that I've gotten from uh, these sort of road bookers and these sort of comedy club bookers is keep it simple and just do what everybody else does, right? They want me to go up there and exploit the stereotypes for the laughs. They want me to go up there and do the Indian accent. Um, they want me to, like, make fun of immigrants on the way that, like, Fox News would make fun. Low-hanging low fruit, kind of, that's kind of the advice that I've gotten. Don't explore, you know, the notions of philosophy or uh, sociology or, you know, deeper intricacies of the human mind. Because that's not, you can't make that funny. Uh, and to that I said, challenge accepted. And that's what I basically built, I have been doing, right? Because that's what I want to fucking talk about. <laughs> but they don't want me to talk about that. Because the color of my skin dictates that that's not what I should talk about. So, and, and that's kind of what I heard from some of these bookers at these festivals. Is they can't put me up on their stage because that's not what I'm talking about. And, you know, it confuses their audience and so on and so forth. So that's one of the reasons is I I don't get that much value out of doing them. It doesn't it doesn't fit my goal. But for other comics, getting that club work is great because their material and their style, look, they might not come up and tell you to exploit stereotypes. They might say that your one-liners are incredible and if you can hold that up for 15 minutes, you have feature work for four weekends. And that's fucking great. And if something like that happens, I encourage comics to take that opportunity and learn from it and have a great time doing it. But it's just not for me. That's not the opportunity that was presented to me and neither is that the opportunity that I want to take. Um, so it's hard. I don't apply to festivals. So you don't really see my name attached to a lot of comedy festivals. The last, the, the last comedy festival I did do was Scruffy City, which is, I don't think, a comedy festival anymore. But the reason why I chose to do it is because... Uh, Knoxville always has a special place in my heart. I love that city. Um, and I found out a bunch of my friends were going to be there. Like, friends that I don't get to see on a day-to-day -day basis. So it was essentially me spending five days just hanging out with my friends. And when you're on the road for 40-some-odd weeks of the year, and you don't get to see these friends every uh, all the time, and don't get to talk to them all the time, that's kind of the great part about festivals. You get to go to a festival and spend five days just hanging out with your friends. The camaraderie that surrounded that festival was really great. And then I got to uh, I got to open for Trey Crowder, which was very cool. Um, I got to sit and talk to uh, Drew Drew Whitney Morgan, which was very cool. And I and I still keep in touch with him, with Drew every once in a while. That's the cool part about doing a festival. The hard part is, one, getting into it and spending the money ahead of time. Um, 
to take a free weekend, right? There are a few festivals that do pay, but there's a, but, but there's a lot that don't. Um, and going and hanging out with friends is great, but uh, I still have my bills to pay. And uh, losing a losing a weekend of of work is is very very difficult to justify right now. Very very difficult to justify. Um, and taking a risk on that and waiting to hear if you're going to get into a festival or not, kind of nerve wracking. I plan stuff out for four to six months in advance, and you know right now I'm looking into into 2020, like early into 2020. And so I have to like make plans for that. I have to I have to route tours and things of that sort. So hearing back about a festival two or three months beforehand is very difficult and nerve wracking. It's very difficult and for, for me. Again, these are personal opinions of mine. And I'm not comics get sensitive, right? And it's like I'm not here to being like, here's why festivals are fucking terrible scams and shit like like I know plenty of my friends that run festivals I have been a part of one I know what goes into making that happen and I know the difficulty of getting that festival to sell out and then taking that sell out crowd and being like come to our regular shows I know the difficulty of that I know the, that there are a lot of people trying to improve the comedy community through the festivals, and that's what I like about them. But my style doesn't suit them. I don't sell in five minutes. So I can't, I can't justify throwing 25 to 50 bucks into an application knowing that, hey, within the first five minutes of watching my video, you're probably not going to laugh. The amount of times that you want to laugh. Because there's pops and punches later. Because in that five minutes where there's a couple little punchlines, there's like ten more minutes of really big punchlines coming up that have worked and developed and crafted. I'm writing in a holistic sense. I'm writing in, in the breadth of a whole show. I'm writing in the context of a full hour. Um, and each time I do it, it's a, it's just a little bit different. It's just in, in the terms of... What, what people are looking for for a festival it just doesn't apply it does apply to a fringe festival it just doesn't apply to a comedy festival um, I think comedy festivals are great you should you, every, you should go fucking watch a comedy festival you should go see what what kind of talented people there are across the country you know learn the flavors of uh, of comedy from various different parts of the, of the country so that's why I don't do them anymore. It's something I've wanted to talk about uh, a little bit. It's it's come up in conversation a few times over the last few months as far as, like, why I don't apply to this comedy festival or that comedy festival and so on and so forth. So I uh, wanted to address that, let you guys know. Hope that, hope that you know, it clears some things up for you guys. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.